Hello biologists, we're going to review for the 3.13 test. That's the mid-unit 3 test in biology at MNBA. We're going to talk about several things that you need to know for the test. Cell theory, parts of a cell and what they do, differences between a prokaryote and a eukaryote, cell membrane structure and function, and diffusion, and maybe a little bit about osmosis. Remember, cell theory has three important parts. All living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. All cells are produced from other cells. Remember this last one. See if you can fill in the blank. Cells come from other cells. That's an important part of the historical theory of uh, cells. Remember we talked about two main types of cells, prokaryotic, cells that don't have a nucleus like bacteria, they're just kind of a mess inside, and eukaryotic, cells that have a clear membrane bound nucleus and they're organized with organelles. Remember the DNA in eukaryotic cells is inside the nucleus. It keeps everything tidy and organized. The nucleus is an organelle and it keeps the DNA organized. So remember there's two types of cells, prokaryotic with no nucleus and no organelles to keep it organized and eukaryotic. You are a eukaryotic cell. You have a nucleus and nice organized organelles. So the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells Eukaryotic have an organized set of organelles that keep the DNA in that nucleus nice and tidy. Prokaryotic cells, no nucleus, no organelles to keep them organized and tidy. They're still pretty powerful. These bacteria can make you really sick, but they're not organized with organelles or a nucleus. Differences between a eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell, you are organized with organelles and have a nucleus. Prokaryotic, no nucleus. The squishy stuff between the organelles in a cell is kind of like the air around in a city. That's where most of the reactions happen in the cell. Most of the metabolic activity, the dealing with energy in a cell, happens in the cytoplasm. That squishy gel-like material between the organelles. Remember, organelles are the cell parts. They keep the cell organized. Organelles keep eukaryotic cells organized. In eukaryotes, there are different kinds of cells that specialize. For example, in humans, we have skin cells, we have nerve cells, and we have muscle cells. These different kinds of cells look different because they form different structures different functions. Remember, structure relates to function. When we organize cells, we can take a cell, a specialized cell, and we can put a group of those specialized cells together to make a tissue. Those tissues get together and form an organ. For example, muscles, certain muscle cells are in your stomach. And your stomach is part of an organ system, the digestive system. So when you organize cells, you get cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. That's the highest level on the test, but there's also organism, of course. In organisms, they have cell membranes that controls what goes in and out of the cell. These cell membranes are composed of phospholipids. Here's a single phospholipid. You can see them all organized here into a row. That's half of the phospholipid bilayer. Remember, bi means two, and there's two layers of these phospholipids that make up most of a cell membrane. The phospholipids are lined up so that the polar end is facing out so it can participate in water-based reactions. Polar is hydrophilic. That means water-loving. This is the water-loving end of a phospholipid. The part in the middle here is the hydrophobic part, the water-fearing part. It stays here. But remember, this part of the phospholipid faces the outside and the inside of the cell so it can participate in water-based reactions. That's the important part. 
hydrophilic faces the water. The hydrophilic part of the phospholipid faces the water. In addition to all the great phospholipids, which are gray in this picture, they make up the majority of the cell membrane. But the cell membrane also has transmembrane proteins. These are the things that control ions, charged particles, and they also control some of the larger molecules that don't diffuse well across the phospholipids. We'll talk about diffusion in a minute. But let's talk about cells as semi-permeable membranes. They're kind of like a fence. Fences let small things like air, water, snow, insects, and mice cross. But bigger objects like raccoon, deer, cats, and dogs can't get in my backyard because the fence keeps them out. It doesn't keep the mosquitoes out, but it does keep the raccoons out. When we, things cross a semi-permeable membrane, sometimes it's because of diffusion. Remember in the food coloring experiment, we put a drop of food coloring here and we waited and over time, because of the movement of all molecules, all molecules are always moving, even though we didn't stir the food coloring in water, it eventually looked like this. And this is because of diffusion. Molecules will move from an area of high concentration, the food coloring in a little glob, to an area of low concentration. The food coloring molecules spread out in the jar of water. Diffusion is the movement of material from high concentration to low concentration. You can think of it as a slide. It's really easy to go from high on the slide to low on the slide. It doesn't take any energy to go down the slide, to go from high to low. Diffusion affects saltwater fish because the water out here has a high sodium concentration, a high salt concentration, because it's salt water. Inside the fish, they maintain a low salt concentration. And this is a problem because diffusion is always moving sodium the high, from the high salt concentration into the fish where there's low salt concentration. Remember, diffusion goes from high to low, the high salt water to the low salt fish. So fish have to have this diffusion problem. So they have to use energy to get the salt back out. They have to use a protein channel, an ion pump, and use some ATP, use active transport to pump that sodium out of their cells. Diffusion is always putting extra salt into the saltwater fish's cells, so they have to pump the salt out using ATP, using energy. Another form of active transport is endocytosis. Endo means in. An amoeba might use endocytosis here, folding the membrane around something to bring in food. Remember, an entrance is where you go in. And N and endocytosis start with the same two letters. N means in. That's why you go in an entrance. Exocytosis is used to move things out of a cell. You use an exit in a building to get out. And that's what cells use to get things out. They use a vesicle, they kind of package up some molecules, they move that vesicle to the cell membrane, and they merge it with the cell membrane, and out those molecules go. That's exocytosis. Active transport uses energy. So if you're mo moving anything out, the cell is going to use some energy. Like that sodium pump channel we talked about in fish is going to use energy to pump sodium out of the fish. Diffusion moves the salt in without using any energy, and the poor fish have to use a lot of energy to maintain the correct sodium balance, to maintain homeostasis. They always want to have the same amount of salt. They don't want to be salt water, so they have to pump that salt out using ATP and using energy. When you use energy, you have to go up 
the slide. When you climb up to the top of a slippery slide to get to the high concentration area, when you're moving from low to high, you use energy to get up the slide. And if that helps you remember the difference between active and passive transport, hopefully um, you will remember that it's easy to go from high concentration to low concentration because that's going down. You don't use any energy going down the slide. But when you have to walk back around up and go from low to high, you use energy. An active transport pumps things from low to high and uses energy. Thanks for coming. We've talked about cell theory, parts of a cell and what they do, differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, cell membrane and structure and function, diffusion, and we didn't get to osmosis, but all you need to know about osmosis is osmosis is the diffusion of water. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion where it's just moving, water is moving. Thanks so much for coming. I hope this review is useful. Leave a comment in the comments if you um, would like to see something added. Thanks so much.